Will Season 3 be considered the rebirth of Halo Infinite? And what kind of cool game mode would really bring people back into the game? Well, I'll answer that and a lot more of your questions within this video. I recently went to my community page and asked you guys if you had any questions about Halo Infinite and you guys definitely responded, so thank you very much. If you want to take part in the next Q&A video, make sure you tap subscribe and let's get right into those details. VNA Podcast asks, do you think Halo would do well with a 6v6 arena mode? It would be similar to a traditional 4v4 arena, bigger and more complex maps would be made for it, more power weapons and more opportunities for vehicles as well. I would personally love to see that. Well, it wouldn't really be too far off of what we've had previously in Halo. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind when it's 6v6 is invasion. But the thing about invasion, about it being 6v6, is that it was a completely new gameplay experience. From what I'm reading from your questionnaire, it just kind of sounds like it's kind of like a hybrid between like Arena and BTB. So you're kind of like blending the two feelings together. But then in that case, why not just play Arena or just play BTB? Unless you're trying to utilize much more of a controlled tactical version of BTB, which I think kind of loses the fun of that gameplay. If you were to do 6v6 in Infinite, it would have to be something new, some new gameplay mechanics tied to it, like how we have with Invasion. Like Invasion wasn't as big as BTB, but still was its own kind of game mode that deserved to be there in Reach because it was a lot of fun. Because one, you had the gameplay elements of Spartans versus Elites, which we've never had before in Halo, which I'm certainly missing out on. And within that gameplay by itself, you had multiple different types of objectives you had to fight through to get to the end of the game. Though if you were to just bring back Invasion, I don't think it would be as exciting as it was when the mode first launched. Because it's an experience that people have had previously in Halo, so we kind of know what's coming with that mode. Nothing really new or exciting to get people to jump in and play. I mean, just look at Invasion on MCC. It was almost impossible to find a match, mainly probably due to the ranking system tied to the mode. I mean, 343 could just like section off the BTB maps, make them a little bit smaller, but then you kind of still run into the issue that the BTB maps currently have right now. So they're very like lane focused. There's not like a whole lot of uh, player freedom and freedom, freedom of choice when it comes to utilizing the vehicles. You're kind of just mainly driving down these narrow hallways, which the upcoming map Oasis, at least that's the rumored name that we saw at the end of the year live stream from 343, does look to be a bit more open, give players with more creativity when it comes to their vehicle play. In 5v5, it's definitely a thing we've had previously. I believe, if I remember correctly, Halo 3 Social Slayer was 5v5. And that didn't really drastically change the gameplay or anything. It just kind of like created a little bit more action, really. But like you mentioned about having like maps specifically made for this, that just kind of takes away dev time. Though we have had this kind of similar kind of like large scale 4v4, small scale BTB maps before, like with Tempest, Zanzibar Standoff, and Valhalla, are good examples of like, yeah, they work out pretty well in 4v4, maybe not so much others, but you know, for the most part, they're playable. Though with boosting that player count of BTB lobbies up to 24 players, that makes that crossover less likely. So then you're making maps specifically for BTB and making maps specifically for Arena which can be a good and bad thing as you're making maps designed for that specific gameplay that you're going for, which could be more catered to that style, but then you have less crossover of content like we had previously in the Bungie games. But basically what I'm saying is that a 6v6 mode could work, but I think you need to mix up the gameplay enough to make it a unique experience, not just like 4v4, but with some vehicles and a little bit larger maps or more controlled BTB mode. Friend of the show, Wicker Octopus, asks, with the popularity of an open world PvE game mode like DMZ, do you see Halo following suit with a similar experience? Well, I kind of talked about this a little bit in a previous video saying if Halo Infinite could do a raid. If you guys are interested if Halo Infinite could put together a raid type of game mode, well, I'll have it linked at the end of this video. If you guys don't know, DMZ is the Call of Duty take on the game Escape from Tarkov. And the whole deal about Escape from Tarkov is that it's kind of like that gameplay loop of playing the game to get better at the game kind of thing. Essentially what you do, you drop into this open world experience, you loot, and then you try to extract from the map. But while playing, you have AI bots that might gain your way or actual enemy players. We saw Battlefield's take with the Hazard Zone game mode, which kind of died as soon as it launched, sadly. And with DMZ for Call of Duty, I haven't really heard a lot of people playing it that often, but when they do, they actually do enjoy the experience. But the big thing that Escape from Tarkov has, what I think a lot of these other larger games lack in, is the risk reward factor. Because in Tarkov, if you die, if you don't have your loot insured, well, you lose it all and you start back all over again. Obviously with Call of Duty, that's not a very casual it take on that kind of experience. So they try to mix up a little bit and basically your reward for DMZ is kind of earning more like cosmetics. 
which we do know that Halo does have a very long history of people really thirsting over some cosmetics in the game. I mean, Recon definitely comes to mind, but also like Hayabusa from Halo 3, that was a highly coveted one. I kind of touched on that with that raid video, saying that there, I think that would be the way to do it, because I think if you try doing a DMZ type of mode in Halo, you have to have some kind of risk to go into it. And I couldn't really think of much in the way of Halo's gameplay that would be a risk for you to play. Because Halo has always had even stars, and I would like to think you'd want to keep that kind of style of gameplay in with the DMZ mode, which basically is just even starts and pick up weapons on the way. Maybe your loadout can carry over for what you find in the world and then spawn back into another experience. And if you die, then you lose like your battle rifle or something like that when you start out with like a AR or just a pistol or something like that. And then your rewards would be some unique cosmetics that make you stand out a little bit more because I think that's a big thing that's also missing within Halo Infinite that there really isn't any kind of form of cosmetic or any kind of visual reward that you can get in the game that will showcase like, oh, you really dedicated your time to this game or you really accomplished something that was very difficult. Everything that looks kind of cool in the game was pretty much bought through the store. So an escape from Tarkov slash DMZ type of mode could work in Halo, but I do think that Halo's gameplay mechanics and current setup would fit better for a raid like we had with Call of Duty, which this definitely would bring in that new experience which I've been saying forever when it comes to Halo Infinite that we just need something new that we've never had really had before in Halo. And this would definitely be one of those modes. Chronomize asks, does is Halo fun to play when shooty shoot people? Yes. Omar Rios asks, would you consider season three the official rebirth of Halo Infinite? Short answer, no, but here's why. Because if you look at the roadmap that we had previously showcasing in season three, the stuff that's there for the season is good, but nothing exactly anything that would bring people in. I feel not really that exciting kind of content because yeah, you get a couple new maps, some new features and things like that, but that's really about it. Now I'm wondering what 343 will do for season three as a lot of the features that were going to be the big ones that come with that season are now in the game, like in-game reporting and the custom game browser. So I feel like with season three, we'll see like a population boost like we normally do whenever there's an update, but then it kind of soon drop back down to your normal numbers, probably like a week or two later. And we do have some extra content coming in, like season three will have Plaza, we'll also have a Forge playlist as mentioned in the previous live stream from 343. I would also expect an expansion of cross-core customization, more with the uh, armor attachments that we have right now. And we do have ray tracing that's been confirmed for season three. But the season's gonna be more of an incremental change, quality of life improvements, nothing exactly exciting. Now imagine being a casual Halo player, you might have dropped off like maybe a month after season two's launch and you kind of start playing something else. Imagine coming back to the game for season three, what would be there for you to play? Well, I mean, yeah, you have the custom game browser and Forge content you can play around with if you're into custom games, um, but you also get a couple new maps, which is great, maybe some new customization, but like, how is the gameplay different? Not much. Still playing Slayer, still playing BTB. Though season three will definitely will be a significant start to moving things forward when it comes to it being an actual live service Halo game. As Speak 3 stated in the end of the year live stream, there are no more extended seasons. They're gone. That's a thing of the past. We'll only have regular cadence seasons that were promised to us before the launch of the game. So about every three, four months, we'll have some new drop of content, which is gonna be fantastic. But again, quality of life improvements, slow incremental upgrades, we just need to wait to see something big comes into this game. Clips Master Productions asks, will Halo Infinite ever be considered a good game? Much like how MCC made a comeback and now is highly regarded. I would say yes, though honestly, I would consider Halo Infinite a good game right now. As you have a fantastic campaign, a rather robust multiplayer experience that definitely has its issues that definitely need to be addressed. But you have Forge in the game, you have a custom game browser, you can have some content to jump in and play. And plus, we all agree that the gameplay of Halo Infinite is rather fantastic. But kind of like what I've touched on previously, that a good Halo game is more subjective rather than objective, because there are so many sub-communities within Halo that unless your aspect of Halo that you like to play is in the game and fully robust with new content and features and things like that, you would probably say the game is terrible. I mean, if you're like a Forge person, you've waited an entire year for the game to be good. But if you're a competitive Halo player that likes playing ranked and, you know, grinding up, you know, through there, it's probably been a pretty good game for you for the most part. If you're a casual player that likes playing more social type of modes, 
probably hasn't really been that good of a game. But from my experience of how I like to enjoy Halo, I like playing the campaign, I like playing BTP, I like playing ranked 4v4s. So for me, the content was there and I've been enjoying myself playing Halo Infinite. I would also say that MCC had a bit of a benefit of like whole new games being released on a new platform to enjoy. It felt like that whole year of 2020 with these new games coming out on PC. It felt like a whole new game being released when these Halo games were coming to PC throughout 2020. Uh, just because like they're classic game experiences that we all know and love we never really truly got a chance to experience mcc that much and so when it came to pc with all the new pc features it was like a whole new experience which was awesome so it kind of had like this big new game releases you play the campaign you play some multiplayer all these new frame rates this higher resolution and all that good stuff it was awesome you know if it doesn't really exactly have the benefit of that because when you release a, a new map yeah that's cool that's fun it's not like releasing a whole new game like it was on MCC. Halo Infinite will continue to get these incremental updates one step at a time, getting better and better to a point where you'll kind of have to take a step back and look at things and go, hey, actually the game is actually pretty good. But I guarantee you in the moment, there's always gonna be something that's broken or something that needs to be addressed that people are gonna be very mad about because you know that's what the Halo community does best. Unless you remember that we had that exact same thing happen with the MCC, that there was always some that need to be fixed, right? The bump mapping in Halo CE was ruined and it ruined my experience of Halo, which I mean, that was definitely an, a visual issue that definitely needed to be addressed. And I'm glad they finally did address those issues. But for Halo to get a breath of fresh air of like a boost of population, like I've been saying, throughout this video guys is that mainly that you would need to like a battle royale mode or a campaign dlc to get people excited about jumping back into playing halo and with 343's focus on the live service we're not really going to see much in the way of campaign dlc i talked about this in a previous video that most of the storytelling for the foreseeable future is going to be through these seasons let's hope that season three's storytelling is a little bit more robust than hey, I'm a Spartan, you're a Spartan, let's go play multiplayer. And with the rumored Tatanka mode possibly coming out in early 2024, which is the current date that I've been hearing around for this leak, that uh, that's when we'd see the Battle Royale coming to the game. But until then, we just have to wait a little bit longer. But it does seem like Microsoft is gonna have some kind of big announcement happening in January, guys. I'll cover that a little bit more once we get more information on it. Possibly get the announcement of Tatanka, we'll see. If you want to know my thoughts, if Halo could throw off a raid much like Call of Duty, well, check out this video right here. Thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.